Hey, I'm Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review, and joining me, if you know sports, you know basketball, you recognize her, Miss Brooke Weisbrod. How are you? Hey, Chris. I'm great. I'm great. I'm so excited for hoop season. How are you? Same. I'm excited for hoop season as well. We saw each other a few days ago in Dallas at the Grand Hyatt DFW, whatever. I think that's right. At the American Athletic Conference right. Basketball Media Day, and, and you were busy as usual. But for folks who don't know about you, give us a little bit about your background, your career, how to get started. Tell us about Brooke Weisbrod. Uh, gosh, well, that's um, I'll try to keep that uh, really kind of the drive through version. So I played hoops at Coastal Carolina University. After that, I played for about five months in Germany. My goal was to make it more down to like Italy and Spain. Unfortunately, uh, I had hurt my back before I went mm. to Germany. And once I realized uh, five months later, it was three herniated discs. It was like, okay, that's a wrap. Wow. And ended up moving to Chicago where I found a job in advertising. Loved the city, hated corporate life. I was like, this cannot be it. I don't know what I'm going to do next. And I stumbled into broadcasting, going back to Coastal Carolina for just a visit. And Matt Hogue, who's now our athletic director, he's amazing. He used to announce our games. He was doing the call and he looks up in the stands and he says, you know, what are you doing? Come on down and interview. That led to this huge moment of inspiration. And then I followed up, you know, hey, who can I contact about trying to call games? Like, I think I think this is really what I'd like to do. And um, my my mentor and the person I ended up reaching out to, um, unfortunately, passed a few years ago. And he told me that um, once I got a hold of him, I like had to basically stalk the guy for like weeks. Once he got on the phone with me, he said, you know, your tape is basically like the worst tape I've ever seen. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and yet I, you know, when I asked why it was a lot of constructive criticism and skills that I needed to learn. I already knew basketball. I needed to learn how to deliver the message. And as you know, you know, as a writer, you, you have to find your way into that rhythm of feeling comfortable and present exactly what you're trying to say as succinctly as you can. So that, that mm -hmm. was kind of like, okay, I got to get it together and, and work on the message more as much as the content. So I got my start in 2004. I still had a corporate job. I worked in advertising. I worked in scrap metal. I uh, worked in new metal. I know way too much about metal. And then in 2012, <laughs> I became full-time freelance. And in 2016, I uh, got to um, thankfully become a Disney family, <laughs> part of the Disney family and, and ESPN, and then uh, kind of just trying to grow from there and, and keep going. This will be, I think, year 20. See, I, I didn't realize it was it was that long. Good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's really impressive. What conferences have you covered? Gosh, I think it's more like what, you know, there's very, oh, I haven't covered, like yeah. I had, right. Um, what's what I love about, especially having gone to a school like Coastal, it's, it is in the South, right? So you're around the ACC, you're around the SEC. Um, and you're also exposed to schools in the Southern and the CAA and a lot of those uh, Eastern schools or the MAC. Um, so I, I love being able to go and see as much basketball as I can, as well as watching it on TV on, on both sides, men's and women's side. Mm -hmm. so, by, so by the time March comes around, you know, you get a sense of how this conference compares to another one and why an argument for an extra team in the AAC might make sense versus another team in a, in a bigger conference or a mid-major. Um, so, so I like it like that. Um, I never know where I'm going to be or what conferences or schools that I'm going to cover each season. And we're all like waiting so patiently, not patiently for the schedules to come out and find out where we're going like any minute. That was one of my, my next questions. Do you have a say in your assignments? When will I, you find out? Um, any minute. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's like, that's why it's so fun is because you're, we're all waiting for, you know, that call or that email to come through. Um, we had just had a, our, you know, welcome back to the season call and all of that. So it's, it's like the excitement is there. Uh, I, I wish, and I would love to, you know, we're basically wherever I am when the game is close, that's how I feel like it's, it's a huge win, you know? So it, and women's basketball is, is almost to me, always a competitive game. Even if one team's up 16, like these runs are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so I just, I loved being a part of the sec 
uh, tournament last year. That was so exciting. And then being able to see, you know, LSU carry on through the regionals and take on a team like Miami and seeing what I felt, what I felt was like I was in the huddle in the moment where Kim Mulkey um, gave it straight to them. And this probably always happens. I probably just caught one of many. And, and she really took it to the team, but like carried their confidence in that moment saying, you know, we're not a good team. If we let teams come back like this, you know, we're just not a good team. We're not a great team. Or or she said, we're not a great team, but we're a good team. And everybody's heads just kind of got back into it. And, and it was amazing, you know, being a part. So something so close to that and then seeing it go off into a national championship. Have you ever covered call games for the big 10? Yes. Yes. The big 10, uh, just the conference in general, the, the network in the past, um, that's, that's always a fun conference. And I mean, with Caitlin Clark, you know, my, my 20 something year old brother is calling me. who's never been a women's basketball fan before Ooh. talking to me about Caitlin Clark. I, it's great. It's great. I think that's, you are calling, I think big 10 hoops. I want to say that. And that's where I, I first saw you. I think it was that I'm not sure how, how long ago that was, but you know, I, I cover basketball and I, I see you on calls a lot. So I'm like, yeah, she, she's somebody I need to know. How long have you worked or covered games for the American? Since the start. I mean, since, you know, I, I was got fortunately got to see the Big East, what I felt like was at its peak, you know, when you had three of the four teams in the final four as Big East teams, uh, Notre Dame, Louisville, UConn, of course, Rutgers. Mm-hmm. I mean, gosh, you go down the list. Um, so kind of seeing that, that conference, um, go where it went and then seeing the creation of the American, you, you, you're able to see this, this new brand and, um, you know, new really college landscape. I mean, the whole basketball landscape changed obviously because of football, but, um, yeah, yeah it's going to create some new, new rivalries and, and I'm excited for some of the new teams and new coaches and players that are coming through this year. As a college basketball player, what are your thoughts on NIL? Could you have benefited from it when you hooped? <laughs> I I had a talk with a, uh, my my best guy friend from from Coastal and I. Um, we talk about this a lot because Myrtle Beach is such an interesting place where you know I'm sure a lot of opportunities would have existed. Um, I I love that it empowers athletes and uh, the coaches who have embraced it. I think of like Don Staley first. Uh, if you want to be a part of NIL you get your business handled by October, meaning uh, you probably meet with an accountant, you meet with an attorney, you meet with an agent, you get all that taken care of so that the rest of the time you can just play after that. And I think the coaches who might be resistant to it uh, are, are not helping themselves because it's here. What I wish, what I want um, players to kind of see and understand from what I'm seeing and hearing out there is there's, you know, a few big deals out there, like Caitlin Clark just signed with um, State Farm, so it's probably a nice paycheck. Um, you know, most of them are going to be smaller, and and it's okay if if you want an NIL deal. It's okay if you don't, but understand how much focus and time is that going to take from you? Uh, is that going to take away from the chemistry of your team? How are your coaches handling it? So I think there's, you know, there's a way to go about it where it's like, okay, I'm just a smart businesswoman, smart businessman, and I'm aligning myself with these companies. I'm going to make money. Like, I think it's great. Why should we limit anybody's ability to earn for themselves and their family because they have a talent? That it just makes no sense to me why you wouldn't do that. Um, I, I would have loved... You know, Myrtle Beach, gosh, there's so many golf courses. Like, I'm just now getting back into golf. I would have loved to try to do that. Uh, you know, there's so many good restaurants, seafood restaurants down by the ocean. So, um, you know, there's uh, there's probably some some cool um, different things. I mean, ocean-related, uh, surf-related, I could have just jumped right into it at the time. In your opinion, what are the reasons, factors for the – explosion in popularity popularity for women's college hoops well women's basketball really in general in america college and pro yeah yeah um i think about the history of it and the and the women who have helped set the stage for this right like you know women who fought for title nine women who just fought to have 
the ability to have have practice uniforms or practice time. I mean, there's there's been so many stages in, in, in the game. Um, seeing the hype that has been in pockets uh, for forever, the game's been supported. Little talents in South Dakota, you know, what Cheryl Miller did at, at USC and, and um, at UCLA back in the day. There's just, there, there's a lot of history with big crowds that have followed women's basketball and being a part of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, ceremonies this summer, seeing Carolyn Peck get in, inducted. Mm -hmm we got to take a walk through the museum and like the, the game being this popular is new. The game being popular is not new. Uh, so there's, there's, I wish like fans would know more, more than that, that like the game's been around. There's a lot of fans out there. So now we have more visibility. We have ESPN buying in, uh, putting highlights on, putting WNBA pregame shows on. Uh, we expand uh, the amount of games that we cover uh, we expand uh, the way the way that we cover it and how we go about representing, uh, you know, make, making sure like the WNBA being, I think, 80 or 85 percent black women. You know, you turn on the TV, you're going to see LaChina Robinson hosting Drea Carter, Carolyn Peck, Monica McKnight. Like you're, you're going to see a representation of what the league is and these women who have played there and can speak on it. So you're reaching the audience that is dedicated and watching constantly now because you have stars because you have marketable women who understand social media, who are just incredible talent, brilliant women, and have a great personality and chemistry. Like I, I would love to be around the Las Vegas Aces all day, every day right now. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being around Sydney Colson and, and the entertainment that comes along with that? Like they're the, they're the hot ticket right now. So like, it's not that we're doing, and we, I say like women's sports, women basketball, it's not that they're doing anything different. It's that they're they're being embraced in a way that hasn't been seen quite yet and a spotlight that's there. So it's like, yo, this is the beginning. And it it's in, in, in kind of insane to me, like Asia Wilson was saying, you know, she doesn't have her own shoe yet. It's insane to me when you think about the buying power of women off of the heels of a gazillion dollar movie Barbie that just came out. I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but it's like, <laughs> you, you open that lid, man. Um, you know, women have billions of dollars in buying power and, and a lot of women have the say so in what is being bought and in, in spent on in their house. So when like women's sports are being supported and there's value behind it, you know, now you're starting to see more corporations and sponsorships being like, OK, yes, it's a sure win. It makes sense. Where to us, we're like, yeah, duh, it's always, it's always <laughs> made sense. We're just we're just waiting for y'all to, to like see it as well. How what is your preparation for a game? What's your process to get ready to call a game? It starts with, you know, watching the games of the teams first. Um, and a lot of times uh, what I'll do is just kind of sit there with, you know, either my computer out or phone or notepad and just like I like to write notes of stuff that jumps out to me just initially. And then, you know, you probably have worked uh, with, with countless SID, sports information directors, mm -hmm. uh, who are such a great lifeline to us. And and I'm, I'm so grateful for them and let's just – nonstop talk about them if I could. They, they're great. And so they obviously take a quick uh, or, or a quick daily check in with the team and understand the pulse of the team. So you have a whole packet of notes there. Then um, I also ask the SIDs um, for all the press clippings of the local beat writers because you guys are also there as well every single day. Um, you great, get a great temperature and feel for what's current, you know, if there's a misstep, if there's just something, you know, for us to say like, oh, I wonder if there's more to that. So by the time those um, kind of get, get sifted through, then I start on my game board. Uh, and depending on if I'm going to the game or, or coming here, uh, we'll set up interviews with the coaches and, the, and um, you know, a player or two at practice or af after shoot around and stuff. Um, the travel is the hardest part. I would joke like the travel is actually what I feel like I get paid for because everything else is just fun. So once I get there and I uh, get a chance to get to the game and talk to the coaches and everything, then you like develop, okay, what's the main storyline that, that is, is kind of the overarching part of this game. Um, is it a team that needs a win to uh, get into the top four seating in their conference? Is it just an early season game to say, okay, we're still looking for our starters, but we need to hit on these right notes to get back to our conference championship. You know, you want to be able to have an impactful, storyline but also not you know not make something what it's not um 
but sell it. Like you want viewers to watch the game because you know you hope it's a close, great game. So give them a reason to watch. What are your thoughts on this season? Is just a few weeks away. How excited are you? What gets you excited each season to cover and call games? Ah, uh, it's it's knowing that, like especially this season, the star power. We haven't had this much star power since Skyler and Elena. It, it was just you know that was and Brittany. You know the trio that they brought in that year was like, oh my gosh, we have you know this. These are big stars. And this year you got so many, you know, basically the whole starting five for LSU, mm -hmm. um, you know, Caitlin Clark. And then you got Paige Beckers back, AZ Bud back at UConn. There's compelling storylines all over the country. You know, what, what Ole Miss did last year was really cool. And, and I can't wait to see them, you know, now that they have been taken seriously, what they're going to come back with. Um, so so that those kind of things, it's like the stories, uh, meeting players, new players at, at Media Day you know, players who want to stick around and, and become part of the media after that. Like those conversations happen all throughout the season as well. Um, and, and just like the, the level of basketball, Chris, has gotten so good. I called a 16-year-old game this summer for, for Nike Nationals. And, I mean, they, they through the legs, they're stepping back. At like 10 years old, let alone 16, they're, they're going back door, reading the defense. And I, I didn't play defense till till college. <laughs> so so these young ladies are are ahead of the game. They they have put in so much work and it's really reflecting on the court in ways that are that are confident and and you see, you know, even the younger generation now really getting into basketball. And and for all the volleyball players that we kept we kept losing all the basketball athletes to volleyball. I'm hoping like, you know, now now the volleyball players want to stick around for the winter and play play hoops. What are your thoughts on the Pac-12, now the Pac-2, this last season for the Pac-12? It makes me sad that, I, I mean, I like the Pac-12. I think it has a lot of cool West Coast tradition. I mean, it's it's sad to see that go away. Things have to change because of decisions made around the football system. Um, so it's like I don't have – it's – it's just sad. I don't know that I have any other opinion on it than that. Um, I just hope that I hope that there's enough adjustments made for all the athletes and the travel arrangements to help make them as comfortable as they can and, and make that work. Um, Cause I don't know if anybody's, you know, if they're taking into consideration the, the gymnastics uh, events and the swimmers, the tennis guys, like, okay, are, are, are they having a really really uh, sacrifice for the sake of these big football matchups. Do you call other sports besides basketball? I have covered other sports in the past. Uh, I've, I've covered softball as an analyst. Um, I, I played softball in college as well. And uh, lacrosse a bit, uh, sideline college football for a season. That was the most, uh, that was the most grueling sport I've, I've ever covered. And, and shout out to, to all of our, our, ladies and men that are out there doing it. That's, that's a, oof, that's a different animal. Um, and yeah, so I think those are it. Um, would love to, you know, maybe be part of some tennis coverage one day. Um, that's still my favorite sport to play. Do you play? I do. Yeah, I do play. And I, I was obsessed with it growing up and, and wanted to, I wanted to go to Nick Volatari Academy, which is now okay. IMG, which is really mm -hmm. weird, but yeah, I begged my mom to send me to, to Nick Volatari. So were you that good? No, but I just wanted to be like Andre Agassi. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is fun. Uh, let me see. At the American. Well, one thing. Do you know how many games you, you will call in a season? I, I do not. Uh, I was just looking the other day, and uh, it ended up being around, I think, 50 by the time, uh, I you know, kind of in between a, a year or so. And that includes the summer. Um, so no, I don't know for this year though. How do you, how do you do all of it? I mean, we, we heard your son a little bit. You're, you're busy doing everything. How <laughs> do you, you schedule all of this to make it work and have a work-life balance? Uh, I, I don't know, Chris, I guess it's like figuring out as we go here. Um, being a mom is a whole new wave. I mean, before it's like, Hey, just make sure you get to the airport on time. And, make sure you're, you're, you're prepared. Well, now it's, 
you know, I can't start preparing until I put him to bed. So getting to the AAC, uh, you know, you do as much as you can ahead of time. So I had, you know, have my binder and I have my notes, everything highlighted, ready to go. But, you know, let's say like my final note cards or to take a look at our format that might not come out till the night before. Because like our producer, Jason Greenberg, he was doing four events basically mm -hmm. leading up to uh, media day, you know, within a, a, a week. Morgan came off of doing a college football game as a sideline reporter and then turning around and hosting for six hours straight. So like I look at I look around and I say, like, we're all on that grind. So, you know, how, how do I, I want to make sure I show up? especially, you know, a new season and you want to understand there's so much to learn. So it's like, you want to just try to tackle everything you can. So, uh, you know, just for example, I had the the notebook and in my notes. And then by the time I get to Dallas and, and hopefully, you know, jet will go down about six 30 or seven. So then I can start work and maybe get finished around like 11, 1130, get, get some sleep. And then hopefully get back up and get another chance of like 45 minutes of prep. So you really just have to like, you really have to be super disciplined with your time. And as an athlete that helped to be that way as a mom, you just like, you don't have a choice. If I have, you know, five minutes, I'm going to try to get something done. But I'll say the only way that I I'm able to do it is through support. I had um, a situation where I actually uh, needed a sitter in Dallas last minute. And, um, you know, shout out to, to, to coach Toyle Wilson from SMU, uh, her, one of her grad assistants, Peyton Courier, um, went to school here in, in, uh, well, Purdue Northwest. And now she's at SMU as a grad assistant. She's watched jet before. And, uh, coach said, Hey, Peyton, you know, you don't have to come in the office today. If you want to help out and watch jet, you can. So I can't even tell you the, the relief of that. You know, I'm sitting here late night on the website, trying to find folks to, to be able to watch him and, and she comes through. So it's, it's just like moments of uh, little fires you got to put out and and not panic and know that the women's basketball is such an amazing community. It they're so helpful. Who are your mentors, folks you look up to folks that, who have helped you, who continue to help you in mm -hmm. your career? Within the industry, there have been so many really amazing, powerful women that, that have had the experience of working alongside for years. Uh, I got to do games with Beth Mowens once a week for the Big East for years. And it was like it was like learning how to be professional on the court, off the court. I mean, Beth is so amazing with how she prepares and um, and how she shows up consistently um like creative every single game and she's funny and nice to everybody. And so like, you, you know, you understand, okay, this is, this is how, how it is and how, I, how I want to um, treat other people and, and be seen and carry myself within this industry. Doris Burke, obviously, cause she's the goat. And uh, we've, you know, had some moments of tough times calling games or if fans responded a certain way, Doris, pick up a phone and reached out and called me. So, so those moments of reassurance and it's just, it, it matters. Those big, big moments matter. Um, Chris Farrow has been a huge uh, support to my career. Um, he was someone who saw, uh, you know, a talent in me and gave me a chance to do a men's game in 2009 when I think it was uh, really Doris and Carol Lawson were the other two women who were only doing men's games at that time. Mm -hmm. So that felt really, powerful and, and a big boost of confidence. Um, and, and then, you know, I look at my family and, uh, I'm the youngest of, of three sisters and, and a, you know, super powerful mom. So it's like, I'm surrounded uh, a lot by, by great women. I don't want to, this is for you to answer how you want to answer. Society is not as evolved as we would all like. Well, some of us would like, has it gotten better for you as a woman calling sports in, in your 20 year history? Hmm. I'd like to think so. And I also know that it still happens all the time. Um, you know, I mean, we can just look at Twitter right now. Um, I actually deleted my account after, after the season and I've been in a great place since then. Um, not that it really took me anywhere, but it was just like, this is pointless. Um, I think it's each, I think, and I think it still exists and it exists heavy. And I think women are showing up regardless. So it's, it matters, but to women who are still standing in that space and, 
and still doing those jobs, uh, we're saying we're going to do this regardless of, of what you say. Um, you know, there's there's actually situations right now in in even in my own family where, you know, we're, we're dealing with, um, you, I mean, hate mail. <laughs> so, so like, that's a situation that's going on right now. Um, so I'd love to say it's, you know, better, better in sports and better in general. It just exists still too much, I guess, for me to say like, yeah, it's, we've made so much progress. We have, it's not enough. Um, mm. It's not enough. Let's, let's end on a, on a happier note. Do you know? Well, I guess not. Yeah, but I'm going to ask you: Will you cover call any Big Twelve games? Oh, I hope Men, so. Men's or women's? I hope so. I, you know, I remember coming in and covering uh, Media Day as a host a few years ago, and it just like it felt like big time. And, and yeah, I would love, I would love to. I know the Big Twelve is it's like fast and physical. To me, it sometimes feels like a combination. And I hope I'm not offending anybody when I say this: uh, like SEC and ACC, a little bit put together. Because you have that flow, but you also have that power, and and it's it's great. It's great. Well, if you call Big Twelve or or AAC, got Houston in the Big Twelve and Rice in the AAC, so All that right. doubles our chances of possibly seeing each other at some point this this college hoop season. Brooke, thank you very much for taking time to talk to me, and kudos to Morgan for arranging this. <laughs> and let's yeah. try to do it again at some point. When you got time in the season. Anytime, Chris. Thank you for hitting me up. Morgan is a great PG. Look, at another assist by, by our, our loyal point guard, Morgan Uber. Shout out. Indeed. Thank you very much. Brooke Rice, Weissbro, you take care and see you this season. Thanks, Chris.